Next, we install PostgreSQL on the database host. We install the repositories with the um install command. Version 11 and the following versions are supported for version 21 of Atomic. We recommend avoiding version 10, which is being sunsetted. We'll initialize the initial database, set the service to auto start, and start it. We configure the Postgres user. Then we configure the pg underscore hba.conf networking configuration file so that our PostgreSQL database is reachable from remote systems, which the automation engine needs to do. Finally, we make some adjustments to the PostgreSQL.conf configuration file. These are specific to Atomic databases, and without them, the solution doesn't work. In the infrastructure diagram, we're installing the PostgreSQL management system on the database host. Before doing any sort of work on your systems, make sure you run an update of the operating systems. For the sake of simplicity, we've disabled the firewall. We'll make a point of being very specific with the different ports and the respective roles. We install version 11.9 repositories. We have to install the libraries first, then the client, then the server, and finally the additional modules. We ask that you perform these steps in this sequence, since some of these have dependencies on one another. If you decide to install another version, say 12 or 13, simply go to the repo pages using a web browser and you'll see what's available. You then change the URLs to the appropriate version. You just have to be consistent. Next, we initialize the PostgreSQL database and set the service to auto start at boot with the system cuddle enable command. If you have a firewall, you should allow Postgres. We'll start the service when we're done. PostgreSQL has the Postgres admin user. We add this user to the visudo file, so it's permitted to sudo. This is something you need to do on CentOS, and we're unsure about other distributions. Then we set a password. PostgreSQL isn't networked by default on Linux platforms. It relies on a network configuration file called pg underscore hba.conf. We switch to the Postgres user and edit this file. It has different sections for local connections, IPv4, and v6. You'll need to adapt this file to your needs based on the location of your utilities, a server, and the type of network you're using. We're not going to fully explain this file, there's just too much. There's plenty of material online. We'll just make one change. In the IPv4 section, we comment out the existing line, which requires the connecting user to have a matching system user. Instead, we use MD5, which enforces password-based user connections instead. Password-based is how utilities and AE connect. We also set the address to zeros across the board so as to allow all incoming connections. Do not change any of the other settings, which could cause some problems. Finally, PostgreSQL has a configuration file called PostgreSQL.conf. We're still logged in as Postgres, so we update this file and set a few things. First, we change the listen underscore addresses field to quote star quotes. 
This makes the database package accessible by other hosts on the network. We also enable five settings with values required by the A database. We uncomment and change settings. They are shared preload libraries, log lock weights, idle and transaction session timeout, auto vacuum vacuum cost delay, and vacuum cost limits. If you do not make these changes, the DB load utility will not execute and you won't be able to load the atomic data structures into PostgreSQL. Finally, you should always restart PostgreSQL after making any sort of change to the configuration files.